Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is the English translation of the Majlis of Hazrat Bana Qamru Zama Sahab Damad Barakatuhum, which took place on Monday night after the Tarawih Salat, Monday night, the 17th of Ramadan, 1443, corresponding with the English date, 18th of April 2022. Hazrat Wala starts off by quoting the ayat of the Quran in Majid, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Thereafter, Hazrat Wala goes on to say that it is a great fortune for me that I have been allowed this opportunity to come and give bayan and majlis. Alhamdulillah, I have been coming for 29 years consecutively and then because of unforeseen circumstances and because of difficulty for the past one, two years, we could not Come this year, Alhamdulillah, my son, uh, Molvi Mahboob Ahmed Nadwi, came and he was holding fort. Uh, that's uh, a great fortune uh, for me. And also, it was my heart's desire that I could complete 30 years. This is the 30th year in uh, Kantaria. Allah Ta'ala make this coming and going. Uh, beneficial and let it be established for khair and barakat for us in the akhirat that it be for Allah and for his recognition and for his love now you know even eating drinking can be the means of gaining proximity and closeness closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Hazrat Manana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to call us and then we used to collect, collectively come and be there with him. There was alu tarkari, potato tarkari, and he would give each one a morsel and each timai torpor in a unified and collective manner, he would say, this is also an uh, ibadat. We have come for this ibadat. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have created man and jinn only to worship me, only to serve me. Now the ulama have written about eating and drinking. If it is done according to the sunnah, then it will be established as an ibadat. Imam Ghazali has written that when a person invites people and if he does, does it according to the sunnah, the great benefits of it. He even speaks about the, the niyat that a person should make. Tani su bil ikhwan. So that we can make the hearts of our friends uh, familiar. So that they can become acquainted with us. Normally there is some type of this and that uh, distance. But when a person invites someone and you sit and eat together, then it makes a person familiar and acquainted uns. And the other reason also, and another niyat is to bring happiness to the heart of a fellow mu'min. Now this is the sharia of Muhammadiyah. You tell me also, how much of ibadat can you do? But what about the things, that natural things that you have to do on a daily basis, your normal chores, uh, your, your eating, your drinking, your sleeping, etc. All of that now becomes ibadat. Hazrat Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala used to say, Ahtasibu naumati kama ahtasibu qawmati. I actually calculate my sleep just as I calculate my tahajjud. I have great hopes in my sleep and I anticipate reward for it just how I make ihtisab for my tahajjud. So it is all about the niyat. A person is going to sleep. He has his niyat so that my heart, my mind, my limbs, my eyes can all take a rest. And then when he wakes up, what about that? Alhamdulillah illadhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. However, 
who has the fikr who has the concern by and large commonly today there is negligence in this regard yes there is a group that is uh, in it and are following closely but by and large uh, there is ghaflat so the ummah is going off the path the ummah is going towards living a free life the ummah is going towards a uh, destruction therefore o nabi wa dhakkir fa inna dhikra tanfa'u al-mu'minin continue advising continue reminding because advice is beneficial for the mu'minin now hazrat maulana muhammad ahmad sahab used to remind us about the sunnats that when you wearing and you putting on always start off with the right and then the left when you taking out always start off with the left and then the right what about the sunnah when you putting on your pants you wearing your trousers you should sit and do it one person was told us and he said ah what about this or that negative remark towards that so what have happened eventually he stood and he wore his trouser and his pajama standing while he wore it while he, when he was standing in all of that he fell down and broke his legs there was another person regarding the ayat of the quran e majid qul araaitum in asbaha ma'ukum ghawra fama ya'tikum bima imma'in tell me if your water sinks to the depths of the earth who fama ya'tikum bima imma'in who can provide you with pure water who can do this for you so he started saying no if we actually do this year and we do that there and uh, we'll get the water out of the ground immediately that person became blind he couldn't even bring water to his eyes where would he take water and bring water out of the ground it is allah's grace it is allah's mercy that he provides you with pure water he provides you with pure water we were going once and it was absolutely dark and i'm asking that hey what's happening why so dark in this and that and as we carried on there was so much of lights in the next area that we passed through but what was it the area that we went through initially it was so dark it was that of ghair non muslims but they were all asleep and then when we came to our area where muslims were residing people were in play in amusement in useless and futile things now if this is the case and the halat of the ummat how would they wake up for uh, fajr now so many in the zaghir and in the others you would find that they sleep early and they wake up early as well therefore o nabi wa dhakkir continue advising because people and the dunya is such that it takes a person towards play play and uh, amusement i always say i have come here to tell you people that it is necessary to make your islah reformation to do it you would have to do that you would have to take that step forward and do it and if you do it you would be understood to be fortunate now make dua that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq and the hidayat of spending our one one moments each and every moment in his dhikr meaning in the broader sense according to the shariat i can remember in the time of hazrat maulana shah wasiullah sahab on one occasion maulana shah wasiullah sahab gave the munajat e bakbul and he said go into the khanka all these people that are sitting here go and ask them that the moon has been sighted for ramadan ask them how many of them recited the dua ask them how many of them actually know this dua have learned this particular dua what was he trying to do and so many of them were learned were religious the khawas 
But then too they did not know that dua, neither did they make it. What was he trying to turn their attention to? That you're not even reading the dua. What qadr do you have of Ramadan? What is asked in that dua for the khair and the barakat of this particular month? We are surrounded by trials, tests and tribulations. It is the time of fitna. But min husni islam il mar'i tarkuhu ma la ya'ni From the beauty of the Islam of an individual is that he leaves out that which does not concern him, which is useless, which is futile. Wal asr, make qadr, appreciate time. On one occasion, Hazrat Wala is saying, I was going to Baroda. I was sitting in the car and I was reading a kitab and doing my things, etc. And this eye specialist uh, said to me, Molana, this uh, light, the Roshni, the light of the eyes are also restricted and limited. Therefore, spend it wisely. Samaj bhoj kar, kharj kar lijega. Spend it wisely, meaning your eyes are also there, but in i'tidal, so you would have more of it. Now, if this is what we are saying about the eyes, then what about that the eyes, the light of the eyes is restricted, meaning your, the strength of your eyes are restricted as you get older and older. But what also, if that's the case of eyes, then is not our lives restricted? That Allah is saying, wal asr. Isn't our lives also restricted and also coming to an end? Somebody said so beautifully that who are these people? Where are they and in what world are they? That Allah Ta'ala had to actually take a qasam to emphasize to them the importance of time. Understand your own nature. Recognize yourself and where have we fallen back? And how far are we from the essence and the original? Look after the tongue. There is a great need for that. There was a muhaddith and there was a buzruk living in that same locality. Someone asked this wali and buzruk that, Hazrat, did you go to the certain, certain muhaddith majlis? He said, yes, I went. I've attended and I heard from him the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min husni islam il mar'i tarkuhu ma la ya'ni I haven't returned because I did not completely and come completely onto this practicing completely on this particular hadith you know it is even said if you go to some person's place and you knock and you ask if if the certain, certain person is here, I'm here for this person. And they say, no, he's not here. Or you ask, is he here? And they, they say, he is not here. Then at that point in time, don't say and don't ask, where, he, where is he? Where is he gone to? Because majority of the time, it is in the better interest of that person or the people of the household not to say where is he gone thereafter Hazardwala says that Dhahab and Dihab be very careful of those two don't just tell anyone and everyone about this year rather keep it uh, secret Dhahab refers to your wealth your possessions your money rather your gold and dihab, you're coming and you go, you're going. Where are you coming? Where are you going? What are you doing? No, not for everybody. Now, you told somebody about this year, if, you, if it was a very little amount of your wealth or your possessions, then he'll understand you to be so insignificant, zalil. He'll hold you in contempt that, oh, he's only of this category or this or that or the other. And if it is a lot, much beyond what he could have expected, your financial position, then what would happen? The immediate effect of that in majority of the cases is that he would have hasad and he would be then jealous of you. Now this is from the usul. This is from the usul. So one one moment of our life we will be asked and questioned about. After the demise of Umar radiallahu ta'ala many months later somebody sees him 
and they see him coming out perspiring. And they ask him about his condition and he said, I only finish now what my hisab kitab and I have been granted salvation. I, I, I made it. Now who are we talking about? Someone who was so just, Adil, Munsif, a just ruler. There was a lady who remarked on her demise of her son that my son is in Jannah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, how, uh, how did you say that? Isn't it quite possible that he might have said something which was useless, futile, something that did not concern him, layani, due to which he could have been taken to task by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allahu Akbar, Zaban ki hifazat, looking after and safeguarding the tongue. So when the matter is so grave, then we should abandon completely and totally futile and useless uh, talks. Now, Alama ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala speaks about the dua. Alhamdulillah illadhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. What a great dua. We wake up in the morning. We're speaking about the value and the qadr of time. And you're thanking Allah because He has given you life. After He has given you death for a short time, you were in sleep. And He goes on to say, that a wali also reads the same dua, a nabi also reads it, a major, meaning an adult, and a minor also, a child also reads this dua. Whoever it is, all of them will have to read this particular stipulated dua because it is stipulated. This is what is mentioned. We have to read it. But the reading of each one is so different. It is so different. Hazrat Shah Ghulam Ali, Rahimahullah, on one occasion, someone came to his house, a king, or it could have been somebody else, and he sat and he sat for such a long time. Hazrat Shah Ghulam Ali went inside and he brought the documents, what can you call it maybe, the title deeds, etc., and he put it, and he said, yeah, this is for you. Maybe you can take over my house. And I rather leave because you have been sitting for such a long time and I've got so much of work to do. What was this all about? What was this all about? It was about the amount of importance they attached to time. And when, was, when this was the case, look at today. His silsila is in the whole of Turkey. Whether it is the president there, whether it is Sheikh Mahmoud Afandi, I had a chance of meeting him uh, in the Haram. Now in the Silsira also, you would find the author of uh, Ruhul Ma'ani, you would find Allama Shami, they are all in, in this uh, same uh, Silsira and the same chain. But look at the elders, the initial elders here. They were so concerned about their time. They looked after every moment. And today look at the barakat of it that you would find that this type of chain in silsila is found uh, so commonly in so many different uh, countries. Spend your time in the remembrance and in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, O oh Nabi, O oh Rasul, ignore them. Do not be grieved by the manner in which they behave towards you, the kuffar. For you will not be blamed. You are not blamed for their disobedience. Rather, look at the other hand. Look at those who are around you, the ashikin, those who are prepared to sacrifice their lives uh, for you. Don't bother about the kafirin. So this is what a beautiful and amazing dua. Alhamdulillah illadhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. At the time of going to sleep, recitation of ayat al-kursi will not allow shaitan to enter. Protection, complete protection. Closing the door and saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Taking Allah's name. At the time of food, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. What happens? It is a blow to the devil and shaitan. What happens to him? No accommodation. 
because you read Bismillah. No food because you read Bismillah. Today, what has happened? Where is all this part in our lives? This is because of weakness in Iman, weakness in Yaqeen, everything there. Everything is stipulated. We may even know about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, increase our iman, increase our yaqeen. Give us the tawfiq and the hidayat of making amal on these uh, ta'limat. On one occasion, something happened and Mullah Jeevan, the great alim and wali, he spoke out against Shah Jahan. In fact, not even here or there, he went to the Jami Masjid in Delhi and he said this from the member. Nevertheless, in answer to that, Shah Jahan gave the order to execute Mullah Jeevan. You know, you should actually go. The Mazar is near Lucknow of Hazrat Mullah Jeevan, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Nevertheless, the son of Shah Jahan, Aurangzeb Rahmatullah Alayhi, was the student of Mullah Jeevan. And he told his Ustad that uh, a message has been sent that they are going to execute you. And uh, he answered to that, oh, okay, if that's the case, not a problem. Uh, bring my container for wudu and let me make also my preparations to combat uh, this particular order of execution that has been sent against me. Now, this is the amount of yaqeen that they had in the hadith. Al-wudu silahul mu'min. Wudu is the weapon of the believer. Nevertheless, the son, Aurangzeb alayhi rahma, goes to the father and he understands, he calcul cal calculates this type of a situation and he says to his father, Oh father, we'll lose everything in all of this year. You rather go there with some gifts and please him and ask for forgiveness because he is also preparing against you. He is also preparing against you. So this is it. al wudu silahul mu'min. Allah Ta'ala bless us with all type of afiyat. Fallahu khayrun hafidhu wa huwa arhamur rahimin. Allah is the best uh, guardian. Allah is the best protector. And He is the most merciful of all those who show uh, mercy. Allah Ta'ala protect our lives, our wealth, our assets, our properties in every way Allah Ta'ala uh, protect us. Rahmat ka abar ban kar jaha bar mein chahiye. Alam ye jal raha hai baras kar bujaiye. Become clouds of mercy and spread out throughout this world. This earth is on fire. Rain down upon it and extinguish this fire. Now make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with afiyat, this entire uh, country. And uh, Allah ta'ala protect one and all, not only here or there or restricted, one and all, so much so even the animals. When we say Rahmat and Rahmatul Lil Alameen, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He came as a mercy unto all the worlds. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim wa tub alayna innaka anta tawabur rahim bi hurmati sayyidin nabiyyil kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.